The breaking news, stay at home. That is the order tonight from four state governors as the coronavirus pandemic spreads. New York, California, Illinois, and Connecticut all ordering non-essential employees to stay home. Those orders cover 75 million people across the United States. New York's governor today telling non-essential businesses in his state to reduce their workforce to zero. These are not helpful hints. Uh, these are legal provisions. They will be enforced. There will be a civil fine and mandatory closure for any business that is not in compliance. Again, your actions can affect my health. That's where we are. But President Trump saying these orders will not go national. Like the Governor Cuomo has done in, in New York, uh, is there any more consideration to a national lockdown to keep people at home? I don't think so. Uh, uh, essentially, you've done that in California. You've done that in New York. Those are really two hotbeds. Those are probably the two hottest of them all in terms of hotspots. Uh, I don't think so, because you go out to the Midwest, you go out to other locations, and uh, they're watching it on television, but they don't have the same problems. So I've been on the sideline for years with my dog man encounter. I watched the debates raging about what they are. I've seen YouTube channels attacking each other over their opinions. Well, let me tell you my story and give you my opinion. I don't believe they're flesh and blood creatures. I don't think they're interdimensional or aliens. I believe they're demons, real demons, and here's why. In 2020, during the height of the outbreak, I found myself in a panic because I was just getting terrible information watching the news, putting my faith in what man had to say. And that led to me just leaving, going out into the woods. I mean, I was over civilization as a whole. Didn't want to see people, hear people, even talk to them. That was what led me into the Appalachian Mountains, where I spent three months alone living off the land. Now, let me say this. My grandfather used to tell me stories about the Bigfoots. And I remember him telling me about the Bigfoots chasing them out of the woods, turning on the doorknobs at night when they were kids. So to be clear, I knew there were things in these woods. Hell, I had even encountered a Bigfoot myself. But this dog man creature, I'm telling you, it's got to be a demon or some type of falling angel. Listen, I hike out 15 miles out into the woods, not a person in sight. And I start to find these strange things that don't make sense. The first thing I experience is this wall of thick, warm air. Understand, this is during March. It's cold in these mountains. So now, imagine a scene. I'm walking along and the entire temperature changes. Not enough for the snow on the ground to melt, but enough for me to notice it. So now, I have my hand extended out, walking, following along with it inside of this wall of hot air. And I move for a solid 400 yards before I start to hear something stalking me in the woods. The craziest thing about the situation is the leaves aren't on the trees. I got clear line of sight. I hear it stalking me, but I don't see it. And that really freaking confused me. Now, I need you to understand my living situation while I was out there. I wasn't living in a tent. My base camp was a real bushcraft camp. A dugout built into the side of a ridge. Right there on the entrance of a collapsed mining shaft. When I stumbled upon it and went inside, you could walk about 10 feet and then there was this wall of rocks. So I figured this would make the perfect shelter and I went to work. It took me three days to make it tolerable. By the seventh day, it was completely comfortable with a front door, a smokestack, and it felt secure and safe. Now, the reason why I explain this to you is because I need you to understand that I wasn't living in a tent during the winter time like some fool. Nonetheless, the first time I encountered this dog man, and by encounter, I mean I saw one of these creatures, was daytime, no later than 12 noon. I was inside my dugout with the door closed, cooking beaver. It was the only thing I had been able to successfully and consistently trap over a 10-day period when I see something walk by the closed door. And whatever it was, was huge because it took one giant step. Wham, it was gone. So I go out the door and look around and only find one print, one huge canine footprint talk about being flabbergasted i'm searching the area trying to find another footprint because this one was the size of my hand and i just knew there had to be another print within the vicinity and there was absolutely nothing 
I circled over and over and over and over, making circles, widening the search, looking for another print, but couldn't find anything. Get this, the next day I'm headed down, trying to break the ice, so I can set some traps to catch fish. This area is not big enough to be called a lake. It's more like an oversized pond that was created by the runoff from the mountains, but it's surrounded by these tall reeds. But understand, it's wintertime. These reeds are dried up and dead. So when you walk through them, it's noisy. I'm talking about really, really noisy. And to get to the water, you have to go through about 25, 30 yards of these loud reeds. Picture the scene. I'm there, breaking the ice, setting traps. When I hear the reeds on the other side of the pond begin to move, there is no way you can mistake that sound. There's no breeze blowing. It's clear as day the reeds are moving, but looking over in the direction of where now I see the movement, there is nothing there. I mean, absolutely nothing. And again, I need you to understand these reeds are dead. You can see through them. It's not like it's overgrown and you can't see. I'm looking with my own two eyes, seeing the move and not seeing a freaking thing, man. Now, when you're in a situation like that out in the woods all alone, it's very, very important that you keep your wits about yourself and don't allow yourself to go into fear. I'm telling myself, listen, that's just some small animal low to the ground moving through the reeds that you can't see. No, 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 no. So I do a quick scan low to the ground and bro, that's when I see these red eyes. Do this. Take your fist, ball it up. In the inside of your fist where your thumb is that's about how big these red eyes were in broad daylight they are low to the ground and by low I mean three feet off the ground and then they ride straight up into the air and those reeds had to be 12 13 feet tall these eyes had to be almost 9 10 feet tall but get this there's no body pause now, somebody's probably saying, yeah, you out there in the woods smoking some weed, doing some drugs. Listen, man, I don't smoke cigarettes. More so smoke any weed. I don't even drink beer. What I was seeing was real. Utterly and completely terrified me. I turn around, skedaddle, back off that ice, through the reeds, back up to my dugout, and sit inside spooked so spooked that I didn't have anything to eat and I didn't come back out of there for two days. After two days, the hunger kicks in and now I gotta go find me something to eat. Now understand, I have other traps set around the area. I'm thinking to myself, listen, I gotta have caught something. Let me at least get the courage to go out here and check my traps. So now I'm heading back out of my dugout into the woods and that's when it dawns on me what is going on. Remember that wall of air that I told you about earlier? Well, bro, I walk into that wall of air and on the other side of it, it's four to five degrees colder. And I come to the realization that somehow that wall of air has moved and I am literally inside of it. And I remember standing right there where I could reach my arm back into that warm air and saying to myself, what in the world does this mean? So I start moving around, checking my traps, and then I notice that, hold on, hold on, hold up for a moment, the woods are quiet. And I'm talking about eerily quiet. No birds, nothing rustling on the ground, nothing in the trees. It's just quiet. When I get to my trap, I realize I've caught absolutely nothing. And when I say nothing, I mean absolutely nothing. 14 traps set around the area and not a thing in any of them. My only option was to head back down to the pond and try and catch me some fish. And this is when I saw Dogman wide out in the open. Imagine the scene. I'm coming downhill. The reeds are in front of me. To the left are this set of trees. And I'm just walking. I don't hear a sound, but something tells me look over to my left. And when I look over to my left, there it is, walking on two legs black as midnight huge sharp pointy ears its back is turned to me and i see this gigantic ridge i don't know if that's hair or if that was muscle if that's a mane like what people say but i see it 
and freeze. You know how it is in those horror movies where the good guy sees the bad guy first and then the bad guy feels the good guy looking at him, turns around and gives him this evil look? Well, that's exactly what happened to me. This thing turns around, looks at me over his shoulder like, I can't believe that you walked up on me. And it gives me this look that sent a chill down my spine. And I know people say that a whole lot, but I'm telling you, it sent a chill up and down my spine. I felt it in my coccyx. For those of you who don't know what the coccyx is, that's your tailbone. I felt a chill go from my tailbone all the way up my spine to the base of my neck and then shoot back down. Then on top of that, this thing takes one step and disappears behind this clump of trees. So now I'm like, okay, we're in a Mexican standoff. I'm not about to run, and you're not finna come from around those trees and get me. So I stand there for 15 minutes, bro. 15 minutes, don't hear a sound. Remember, it's dead quiet in these woods. No movement, don't hear anything. So now I'm switching positions, moving slowly, trying to see on the other side of that tree, and it's gone, gone. Finito, gone. Nowhere you can find it. Can't see it. It's not there. I even walk up to that clump of trees, walk around them in circles, gone, no footprints, no nothing. Somebody please explain that to me. Now, if you listen to the story, you can say, and I wouldn't be mad at you if you said, oh, bro, you was hallucinating. But I wasn't hallucinating. I'm going to tell you exactly how serious I was about this. I turned around, went back, got my stuff. And begin to hike out of there. Knowing that there was a strong possibility that I would be hiking through the night. But I decided I didn't want to be in the woods with nothing like that anymore. Hours. When I say hours. Hours later into the darkness. I get back to my vehicle and head my behind home. And that was the end of the COVID pandemic panic for me. When I realized that the woods, which I thought was a safe haven, wasn't really a safe haven for me. Uh-uh. Nope, 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 nope. I'd rather just lock myself in the house, eat spam, and not go outside and talk to people. Screw that. Mm-mm. Not going in the woods. Not with that thing. Because if it was an animal, it wouldn't be able to do any of that. Not possible. That's not an animal. That's something demonic. And I'm leaning towards it's a fallen angel. Now, here we go. Somebody's saying, well, why would you call him a fallen angel? What makes you think it's a fallen angel? Oh, I read my Bible, I'm reading it, and it talks about Lucifer, Satan, right? At one point in time, he was angel of light. Another point in time, he was an angel adorned with all these stones and stuff on him. Then, the next time we hear about him, he's a serpent in the garden with legs. After that, we hear about him as a dragon. Clearly, Lucifer, Satan, could transform his body into different shapes. Now, I don't know if you follow my theory or not, but clearly an angel can take any shape. It's written right there in the Bible. And all I could think to myself was, what if, what just if these things are fallen angels that decided to take the shape of werewolves? I'm not going to be able to outrun, shoot, fight, stab, kick, nothing. I'm not going to be able to do anything with that. So guess what? I just don't go in the woods anymore. 